Well, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I am Manuel Munuera, and I am a PhD student in the Jose Antonio Sanchez Alcázar's lab uh, in the uh, Andalusian Center of the Developmental Biology, uh, or the ABD, in the University of Palo de la Vida in Seville. Well, I am going to start with a brief introduction of Caxis A syndrome. Caxis A syndrome is uh, a disease that result of a, uh, that ha is ca characterized by a mutation of the Caxis A gene uh, or lysine acetyl transferase 6 A that produce some common symptoms like we see in the in the slides. Well, what uh, Caxis A do? Caxis A use acetylcoenzyme A to acetylate the stone A and have the good uh, epigenetic marks. When there is a mutation in the Caxis A gene, the uh, stones are no longer acetylated and this would, could produce uh, some cell alteration. Well, uh, what are we doing in our lab? Uh, first of all, we need a study model. We use, we choose uh, fibulas because the fibulas of the uh, of the patient has the same mutation in every in every cells. So, and besides, it's easy to grow and to extract. We obtain the the cells by a skin biopsy. We select the the fibulas and then we obtain the protein and do a western blood. As we can see, uh, we see firstly we start this uh, experiment, uh, experimental strategy with three patients. The first one has an insertion of su amino acid that results in a premature stop codon. It means that the protein is uh, smaller than the, the wild type. The second one has a best change that results in a uh, whole, uh, whole protein but not functional. And the third one has a best chain that results in a premature stop codon. We use acting, as we can see here, where uh, as a reference because uh, his expression doesn't change uh, between controls that are the C1, C1 and C2, and the patient. As we can see, uh, we, uh, the expression of this protein is lower than the controls as we can see in the result of Western blood and in the in the bar graph, and uh, there are still protein because they have a one normal allele. So for this reason, they have a still protein. Well, uh, we start uh, studying some pathways. First of all, uh, we started uh, these pathways because in our lab we are working with that and I will, I am going to explain why we choose these pathways. These pathways are mitochondrial proteins, coenzyme A metabolism, iron metabolism and antioxidant enzymes. Well, as uh, the Caxis A uh, disease has uh, some neuronal uh, symptoms, this is usually uh, related to a lack of energy. This energy is produced in mitochondria and the mitochondria uh, specifically in the well, uh, and the, uh, the specifically in the respiratory chain. So, for this reason, we see the expression of some protein related to the respiratory chain, specifically the complex 1, 4, and 5. As we can see, the first two lanes show the uh, normal expression of this protein in control, and the uh, other three lanes show the expression in the Caxis A lines. Uh, as we can see in the Western blot and in the bar graph, there is a decrease in some of these proteins. Well, as uh, as a Caxis A protein use acetylcoenzyme A to acetylate stone, we also see the coenzyme A metabolism. We are going. We, we, I am going to explain a brief introduction of coenzyme A metabolism. First of all, uh, the pantotenate kinase uh, or pan uh, or pan two 
and are forming acetylcoenzyme A. This protein passes the coenzyme A from the 4 phosphopantetin to the acyl carrier protein or ACP, and this is involved in the citric acid cycle where there is uh, the, some protein related to this. This coenzyme A could uh, go to the nucleus and acetyl the histone. Uh, well, we see the, the West, uh, Western blood and with, that, with the bar graph that, uh, again, there is a decrease in the concentration of all of these proteins. Uh, as uh, the PAN2 is also related to the iron metabolism, uh, we also see an iron is an essential element that uh, an excess or a deficit could produce uh, some disease. We, see, we also see the iron metabolism. I am going to explain a brief introduction of iron metabolism. Iron is transported uh, by the transfer rate in the blood, uh, the transfer receptor catch the transferring and pass the iron inside the cells in vesicles. Uh, the DMT1 is another protein, pass the iron to the cytoplasm uh, and create the free iron pool. And the free iron pool could be used in the way of store uh, for ferritin, for create ferritin. It could be used for cellular function or it could be go inside the mitochondria by the mitoferrin 2. And here it could be used for uh, mito uh, for create mitoferrin mitochondrial ferritin, or it could be used for uh, iron sulfur cluster. Uh, well, an excess of iron in the cells could produce ferritinophagy uh, thanks to the NCOA4. Now we see the expression of some, pro uh, some protein related to iron and almost all of them are affected. As we can see in the Western blood, we see a decrease in a lot of proteins uh, related to iron and we have the uh, bar graph to corroborate it. Now, uh, the theoretical dysfunction in iron and coenzyme A metabolism could produce a reactive oxygen species. This, with their free radicals, could produce a cell mutation. For this reason, we also see the antioxidant enzyme, in this case, SOD1 and GPX4. Uh, and as we can see in the Western blood in, and in the bar graph, there, is, there also is a decrease in both of them. So, now we start a bit of screening. We finish the characterization of the fatophysiology. We start a big screening where we want to uh, find potential treatment. We start we, uh, with fibroblasts. We put the fibroblasts in, in wells and we uh, put a, a condition where the cells don't survive. In this case, like the Caxis A fibroblast has a mitochondrial dysfunction, we use a mitochondrial toxin. In this case, is oligomycin. We uh, saw at the first two picture of the left uh, show the cells uh, uh, before using any compound. The uh, second, the two pictures uh, in the central uh, line uh, are the control with the toxin and the Caxis A fibroblast with the toxin. As you can see, the control survive and the Caxis A fibroblast don't. Now, finally, we try some different, different treatments and uh, at increased levels. And as we can see, in this case, both Caxis A control fibroblast and Caxis A fibroblast could survive. So, now we see uh, a bar graph that uh, is a summary of the, the, expl the explanation. We see the first bar. The first bar show the control without any compound. The second bar show the control with the toxin. And as we can see, they grow. Uh, the third one has uh, the Caxis A fabulous without any compound that survives. And the fourth to the final uh, bar has 
the Caxi-Safe fibroblast with the uh, toxin. As we can see, we tried a lot of treatment, but we found uh, three treatments that result in a uh, growth of the, uh, of the uh, Caxi-Safe fibroblast. We see that the toxin don't survive. This line means that the cells survive. There are more or less cells that are the first uh, that the time zero. Uh, we see that uh, an increased level of this treatment uh, at 0 0.8 micromolar exactly, the cells could survive with the toxin. This means that uh, the, this treatment could be help, helpful for the uh, caxi safe fibroblast. So we found um, three treatments and uh, when we use two of them uh, as a synergy uh, together, we could uh, show that the concentration of both treatments are lower than when we use uh, only one or only other. So uh, as we can see in, the, uh, in this bar graph at 0 0.7 micromolar, we obtain uh, that the caxi cells survive. Uh, besides, we see that there are more cells than before. So now, to corroborate this, we did a Wester block, like I said uh, before, uh, where the, uh, we use the first line is the control without any compound. The second line is the control with the, the synergy. The third line is the caxi fibulas without any compound. And the fourth one is the caxi fibulas with the treatments. And as we can see, there, has, uh, there, are, there is a recovery of uh, some of the protein, totally or partially, of these proteins. We also see we did this with every patient, every patient, uh, fibroblast uh, patient, and we found a different difference between patients. We found that uh, the basal expression of some proteins in uh, some uh, patient is different to another. And we found that we need less concentration for this patient than for another patient. So uh, in this case, at 0 0.4 and 0 0.4 micromolar of treatment 1 at treatment 2, we see the recovery of the proteins affected. We see the most uh, remarkable protein for, for, for show. Well, now, as the caxi say uh, protein acetylcystones, we see the total acetylation of the H3 stone uh, because they, by, by the H3, because as my colleague uh, David said before, uh, the caxi say protein acetyls leasing 9 and leasing 14 of the H3 stone. As we can see, there is a recovery even exceed the acetylation when we use both treatment at the same time. This uh, means that uh, the, the, the symptoms of the, of the disease could be uh, less uh, pronouncing. So now we corroborate this by immunofluorescence. As we can see, the first line with DAPI show that uh, the locate the nucleus. The second one shows the mitochondrial network. The third one is a uh, antibody against lysine 9 and lysine 14 acetylated of histone H3. And as we can see, when the control have a normal level, the control with synergy have um, a little more uh, of, of this acetylation, but the caxi safe fibulas has less uh, acetylation than the, the controls. And when we use the synergy with the two treatments, we obtain a recovery of the acetylation. Well, now as the caxi safe proteins uh, affect some pathways as uh, we did at uh, RNSEC. RNSEC showed the expression of differential uh, proteins uh, between conditions. 
we see uh, this volcano plot where uh, between control and patient and here each red dot means a, a differential expression between both condition if the red dot is on the red uh, on the left side of the central line means that the patient has more expression for this processing uh, process than the than the control and if the red dot is on the right side of the central line means that the, the control has more expression for these proteins than the, the patient. Now we see a horizontal bar graph where uh, show the biological process affected by the proteins that has the differential expression. We see again uh, between control and patient that the bar, if the bar is on the left side, means that the, the of the right side, sorry, means that uh, this process is higher in controls than in patient. And if the bar is on the left side of the central line, means that the, uh, the patient has this process higher than the control. So as we can see, there is a, a demethylation in, in, in control higher than in the patient. This uh, could mean that there is a uh, more regulation in control of the epigenetic mark than in the uh, in the patient cells. Uh, on the other side, we see that uh, the neuronal action potential and the negative regulation of dendritic uh, antigen is higher in patient than the control. This could mean that there is uh, a deficit. Uh, there is a decrease in the in the potential uh, in the energy in the cells and the neurons and uh, this affect the neurons so then uh, the cells try to restore it the 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 potential well now we see another volcano plot but in in this case between patient and treated patient has the same rules above mentioned and now we see Again, a, a horizontal bar graph, in this case, between patient and treatment patient. But in this case, the, the process are on the, uh, the process are uh, like the treatment patient has the same process, the same level of this process than the control. Sorry. So as we can see, the neuronal pathways are increased in the in the treatment patient and the demethylation are increased in the uh, in the uh, patient so this could mean that the, there are there is a recovery when we use the treatment of of, of this five in these fibulas so now we see a bar graph where with the most uh, remarkable protein pan or uh, antioxidant enzymes there is a recovery of each one of the uh, of the proteins. Now, as uh, the Caxis A protein, acetylistone, and use uh, NAD or nicotinamide uh, adenine dinucleotide as a cofactor, we also see the uh, concentration of these molecules in his way uh, oxidated NAD plus and in his way reduced NADH. Now, as we can see, uh, in all of them, there is a partial recovery of the uh, concentration of these molecules, but not totally. So this means that uh, there are still improved uh, in our uh, treatments. Now, uh, what to do next? Uh, so we have planned a series of chip sec to really see what part of the genome are acetylated when we put the treatment in the Caxis A gene, in the Caxis A fibrolas? Sorry. After that, we are going to do a, a DNA reprogramming where we pass the fibrolas to neurons okay. using lentivirus to prove uh, the treatment in the neurons, as the Caxis A syndrome has uh, some neuronal uh, disease, some neuronal symptoms. Sorry. 
uh, we uh, see if the in the neurons the treatment are still effective and we corroborate this with by western blood and immunofluorescence so finally the conclusion of this work there are alterations in mitochondrial protein, coenzyme A metabolism, iron protein related with iron, and antioxidant enzymes. Patient fibroblasts can revert their alteration with commercial and current drugs. Each patient fibroblast line response is different for each potential treatment, and personalized medicine approach is needed for CACSIS A patients. And my thanks to all the members of my lab and uh, CACSIS A Association Spain, American, and Super Authenticos for financing this project. Any questions? Thank you, Manuel. That was great. Um, one additional question. I think you, you were working on two samples, sorry, two IPSC samples or two patient samples. Is that correct? Uh, no, three patients. Three. Three. I'm sorry. Do you, do you need more? Like, do you, do you expect that's enough for these continued studies or? Well, we want to do a personalized medicine. So we need uh, each patient file to do the, the, the screening that we did. Uh, for find the exactly concentration that could be helpful for each patient. So really, I, I need more. I need uh, every patient to, to give us the, the five glass. Okay, I have a frequent flyer in the questions department. Um, Am I understanding that it's not in the personalization, it's the concentration of the medications, but you're not finding that different patients need different medications? It, well, it depends on the, on the patient need some more concentration or less concentration or another, co another compound to be the, the personalized uh, medicine. As we uh, see before, uh, we put the graphic of two treatment, but we are still uh, proving, uh, trying some several treatments, and we found another. But is uh, helpful for one uh, for some of the patient, but not for all of them. So it's a matter of different compounds and different concentrations. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Um, your studies on fibroblasts, have you think, have you done or are you thinking of doing it on muscle biopsies or um, nerve biopsies, maybe? First question and second question, and um, these changes or the treatment that uh, you see in the cell, uh, what's the timeline? Um, how much does it take to you to, to evidence change in uh, function of the cell? Okay, well, uh, the first uh, question, could you remember? Um, have you done studies on uh, other types of biopsies, muscle oh. or, or no? Well, parts? no, we, we, we don't mm, do experiment with another kind of cells, but for this reason, we want to uh, do a data reprogramming from fibroblasts to neurons to see in the neurons, but we don't need um, a ne neuron biopsy. And the second one could be... The timeline, how much does it take to see changes in the fibroblasts, for example? When we put the, yeah. uh, the treatment, yeah. uh, around, around 15 days or something like that. Hi, Manuel. Thanks very much. So, um, I just have two technical questions. One of the problems we have with um, cats is like antibodies is they're not very good. Yes. Um, so, do you plan to do chip seek with cats to say antibodies? Well, we use commercial cats say antibodies. Okay. But yeah. we, we, we increase the, the concentration because as you say, it's difficult to see the protein. 
So we, we, we should see if the cancer say antibodies are and it wasn't really successful because it's picking up other proteins and it's confusing the results. Um, the, other, the other thing I'll just the point of you know making sure your experiment really as best as it can be is just be careful with the H3K9 is settled and the H14 is settled antibodies. Sorry, would you repeat? I don't hear you. The installation is really being used. You need to check the specificity. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have the, 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 the whole picture, yes, but I only put the, the, the line to see all the, all the results in the same slide. Sure, because, um, you know, there's, there's some literature. Yeah, yeah. I, I know, I know. I have the, the, the same problem. Not, not very selective, so uh, you just have, we have to be careful. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I have the same problem with the, yes. with the antibody. Thanks. Any other questions for Manuel?